Hey there, Outliers. Niyama Shang here, and thank you so much for letting us be a part of your journey. We here at Outliers Edge really focus on how you can leverage what makes you different to make your biggest difference in the world. And we do that through helping you build out your business in a way with the systems uh, and processes and just like uh, the uniqueness that is you to help create the, the rare outcomes that you can bring to life here. I'm talking to one rare person uh, right now. Uh, her name is Rita Suzanne. And, and Rita, I am incredibly excited to uh, honestly share like share what you bring to the world, share who you are uh, with with uh, outliers out here and, you know, just continue to grow with you. Thank you so much for making the time for this. Well, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's been it's been cool. Like outliers, like Rita's one of the people that I've been like, we, we had a chance to talk a couple of weeks back and I've just been like, I cannot wait for you to get uh, to, to get in front of outliers and uh, share a bit. So Rita, I, I start off each conversation here with a bit of like who you've been to me so far. Um, and then I like you to give some context as to like you um, like personally, like what the game that you're playing right now. So it gives us a little bit of um yeah, it gives, it gives us something to anchor into um, in terms of like your outlier and, and where we take the rest of the conversation. Sound good? Sure. I'll, I'll start off with, with a bit mm -hmm. of who you've been to me, though. Um, I got to just take a quick breath in here. So, Rita, like, we're getting to know each other, but like, I, as I said to you, like, I was genuinely full of this, like, like exuberance, excitement talking to you. And I think part of the, the one of the really thing, one of the things I really get about you, like, it, is that you're very refreshing, right? And when I say refreshing, the refreshing part for me comes in, it's like, I don't feel like, I feel like you're just like straightforward. You are down to earth, but you, and you're in constant action, which means that you have constant, like every time I talk to you, there's something new that's coming up in your world, but you actually like are, you're very clear in the way that you like share that. Um, and it's also just like very, yeah, the word for me is like down to earth. And what all that means for me is that like it gets past like I don't feel like like there's any masks with you. I feel like like you you share the good, the bad. This is exactly where you are. This is exactly where things are going. Um, and as as a result of that, I feel like no matter what we talk we'll talk about, I always grow in your company. And that's something where I'm like, I think that's what really gets me like excited here because I'm like, we can go anywhere. Um, but like you you're forthcoming as well. Like, like, like you're not, you're, you don't hold back, but you don't overshare either. It's like, it's like exactly what the person needs in, in that, in that moment. And so um, I'm having this experience of you right now. I want to make sure, make sure I, I, I share that back to you here. Uh, thank you for being you. Thank you for bringing, like bringing you to the, to the table. Uh, there's so much more to you than what I, what I've experienced. Um, it's a little bit more of how I've experienced you internally. I'd love for you to share a bit about like what's the game you're playing on the external basis. You might mind letting us know uh, like the mission you're on and, and what you're what you're up to right now. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I recently just as we were talking about before, just pivoted to start just focusing in on helping clients get more local leads and and just focusing in on their businesses locally. Because what I'm seeing is there is a need for you to be on social, but a lot of us are kind of missing the opportunity for our local um, communities. And I think that that's super important for all of us to really give that in. Like, like I mentioned before, I think that there should be a three tiered approach to your marketing, right? So local is part of it. Your social is part of it. You still need to have your social, <laughs> like don't give it up. Don't just walk away. And then your online presence, which is your website, your SEO, your Google, my business and your email list. Like all three of all three of those things are important and should be done to, you know, execute and continuously driving leads into your business, because that is the number one thing that we should all be focusing on. Yeah, you know, outliers like uh, read it a bit. I like I like you to like share a little bit about like how you came to this, like because uh, you're you're sharing a bit with me earlier about it. And um, what I what I what I want to kind of call in here, outliers, is that like after talking to Rita, what I got for me was like every business can have a local presence. Every bit like like as much as they say like like you think about it the other way around, you're like oh you need to be having an online presence. Like I started talking to Rita, I was like oh 
there are there are opportunities right down the street. There are opportunities right around me here that like I don't even know how to tap into. And instead, I'm like I'm trying to uh, go all the way out into the world uh, to some random corner of the world and say like maybe this will connect. Whereas like uh, it, it kind of reminds me of like when I was making all my offerings as a coach. Like I would try and talk to as many strangers as possible, but I like eventually I realized I wasn't bringing my gift home to any of the people that I knew. So my people, the people in my world were struggling, and I'm out there trying to find some rando like out there. And it's like why can't I just like there's people right here. And there's a lot of them and they had like, there's something to do there. So um, take us to, th that's what excited me about like when, when you were talking about this year, take us to like how you came about recognizing this year. Cause I know you've had a, a business for several years. Like you've been doing a lot of different things. Like this is not a, what, what made this clear to you that like, Hey, hold on. There's a real opportunity here. Um, I, I'm very curious about it from like your, your perspective. So when I started my business, it was um, 2014 and I started as a web designer. And one of the first things that I did was start with local networking. But um, the reason why I started my business was so that I could be at home with my sons. However, they were so young that I couldn't really um, network a lot locally. And so, um, a couple of my my very first clients did come from local networking. It was super fast and super effective for me to get clients um, locally and very quick because people can talk to you really quickly and they can tell if they trust you, if they like you, you know, so um, the relationship forms much faster and easier than it does online. So that's something that was always in the back of my head. But then as my kids were growing up and needed me to be home, I instead had to pivot and focus more on building online relationships. And so that's what I did, just like everybody else. They're like, oh, I don't really have time to network locally. Like my kids are here or like, you know, it makes more sense if I just focus focus on social because, um, you know, it takes too much time for me to get dressed and go out and do all these things when I can just post on social 15 times, then maybe that will get me more attention versus, you know, going out and meeting somebody. But if you listen to what I said, you actually can develop a relationship so much faster in person than you can online. Um, so what happened was, you know, I've moved across the country. I've moved from Ohio to California and back and forth, you know, four times now. Um, so I'm back in Ohio and I, I'm like, I really need to, you know, step up my, my networking. And so I was doing a lot of online networking, but it's just, it's just not the same. And so I'm like, I got to, you know, start doing some more in-person stuff. And really I started to see the effects of the local networking work that just so much quicker. It just, it started to work again quickly as it did when I first started my business. And then I had a client reach out and wanted me to help them with um, some SEO and some other things. And I started to see his website, you know, um, traffic increase, which ultimately helped his business. But I did it to mine as well because I wanted to test I wanted to make sure it wasn't just a fluke. And I saw mine um, increase and business increase in it as well. And so I said, well, there must be something to this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I started to really hone in and focus on um, local stuff. And then I was on an interview, uh, I want to say about a month ago, and this is something I, I didn't mention to you uh, while we were talking, but the, the person asked me, the first question she asked me, she says, so I just want to know, like, what have you been saying yes to lately? And I said, you know what? Actually, I've been saying no to a lot of things lately. And no was kind of the catalyst for me because I started um, turning down a lot of interviews. I started canceling some interviews for my podcast that I didn't feel were a good fit. So that was kind of the... Um, the first step with my podcast where I was like, okay, these are not great interviews. I'm going to uh, cancel these. And then I started to really evaluate what was working for me in my business. And like we discussed, 
my target audience initially was mom owned businesses, at least with my podcast. And as things started to kind of evolve, I said, that's not even the niche that I want to serve any longer. So it just started to just pivot and pivot and pivot and pivot. Yeah. And, you know, so then I started to really just figure out what I wanted to do. And I think that that's something that all business owners go through. Like yeah. we all just, you know, our businesses just kind of evolve as we grow and we evolve. Yeah. So there's a couple of different things I want to like pull out in here, Rita, that as you're talking, um, and as you talk, as you talk here, I'm also going to relate things back to outliers. So outliers, like, like, like we got you here as well. Um, one of the things that I'm hearing, like, I'll start kind of like at the end here, but like you have been, you've been doing business for a while. So, so 20, you said 2014 when you got into business, uh, you had uh, a niece that you were, you were working with, you were, you, you know, you had built a lot in that direction. Uh, and underneath that niece, you had a lot of different skill sets. Uh, and if I'm getting you right, like you got to a certain point where, you found recently that you're like, I'm actually like, not like as driven by this anymore. Um, in, in particular here. And, and if I'm getting you like, that was also like, uh, represented by like the physical elements of like, I think I'm going to take these conversations off my calendar. I think we're going to move, move in these directions, so on and so forth. So first let me go to allies. Anyone that's listening here, like, like I want to just invite you right now to pay attention to what are some of the actions that you've been, been taken recently and what are the clues in there or the indi indicators in there around anything that is like no longer lighting you up? Uh, and, and what is that telling you? Like Reed, I really respect you for like leaning into it. Like you didn't like I'm I'm sure it wasn't like an easy decision to just like jump off into something else, but you also you've embraced the pivot from 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 what I what I gather about you. And I think that it, it's not easy to be able to necessarily make make a like an informed change here along the way, especially as as you're seeing it. So let me firstly acknowledge you on that anything you want to say to that that process anything before we go on especially as these outliers uh, us outliers we are we're multi-talented multi-dimensional um and we tend to be able to perform well in anything that we do so like the options of changing are always available so i'm kind of curious if there's anything else you want to add to that experience of the pivot and then we'll go into like the local part too i think it's hard for people to pivot publicly um often because they are fear the judgment that they think that people are going to give them for like, obviously this person doesn't know what they're doing. They're just all over the place. They're going from this thing to this thing. They must not know what they're doing at all. And in fact, what you're really doing is just honing into what you actually want to do. And it's okay to do it publicly, right? Because the more people that see it actually, um, kind of, you'll, you'll be surprised. People will follow you and be like, you know what? I actually saw you doing that and they will embrace it and, and actually encourage you to do that and, and applaud it. I think. I think that, I, I'm glad you brought that in Rita, because I mean, like one, one of the big things for us as outliers is like walking that fine line of like, okay, I want to be like accepted and understood for what it is that I'm doing as well as like, I got this idea that no one's ever seen before, you know, or I've done like, or like I have so many different like passions and talents and so on and so forth. So um, you, you were actually speaking to me when you're like, what are they going to think about all these different changes and pivots and all that? Like the number of times I've stayed with something for too long, that wasn't right for me. Um, like, like, I'm even thinking right now, like I had a, a, I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching business that I recently closed the, the doors to. Um, and it's like, it's like, I actually still like one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I don't want to beat people through that. It was like, right. like my energy was just off in the way that like, I'm like, I just want to co-create with you. And so I had to move to like a community model, like a larger, like, just come on in. Like, you know, cause that's just who I am. And then like for some people, some of them will, will work together in, in deeper capacities here. So I really, I really, um, I appreciate you bringing that in, especially given given this group here. Now, let's go a little bit here. You're talking also about the the you you you, you had to make you made some changes from a, like local networking. You had a client that that uh, also like uh, brought you in to do to help improve their their local business game here. Um, mm -hmm. Let's speak a bit here to the the components of like taken something that has been a predominantly like global brand, you know, or like, you know, let's say so.
brand um and either adding on or like you know basically just building out the local edition like i'm thinking about it from where i live i'm like man it'd be really awesome if like people actually knew what i did down the street like how cool would it be to go to the local grocery store and then people be like hey by the way like let's talk you know i i really only see that with like our political figures out here i'm like you're you're the city council member you know I'm like to me that's cool um and i feel like I feel like you're really good at helping people be able to create that so let's let's talk a little bit here about like some of the benefits you're seeing some of the ways and maybe some of the concrete ways that someone can like just get like some low hanging fruit on that and then we'll go off from there can you elaborate a little bit for me on what you're asking yeah so the the answer i have are twofold one what are some of the benefits that you're seeing from from going like adding in the local component of it uh and then two like if someone was like today i just want to get like do something to like actually have like a local presence like what would you say is like either the most fundamental or like the the quickest thing that they can just go and implement um so i feel like there's a couple things that you could do right away is to work on your google my business profile that's an important thing make sure that um, all of your information is kind of matched up so if you have a google my business profile like i know a lot of you should not use your home address right get a post office box use that um if you're going to list that on like a yelp or something like that make sure address your phone number all of these things are the same on all of the um, profiles make sure your information is the same for google my business make sure you are listing your services ask people to give you reviews and ask them to include your main keywords that you're trying to get found for so if your main keywords, like for me, it's like marketing strategy. If I'm trying to get found for marketing strategy, I'm going to ask them to include something like marketing strategy inside of the review. And then when they give me a review, I'm going to reply back and I'm going to include the keywords marketing strategy back to that review. Um, I'm going to, you know, also go into maybe some Facebook groups that are local and I'm going to try to connect with some of my local people and go to some no, um, networking events. And one other thing that I love to do is maybe go on Instagram and search up some of your local, um, local companies, maybe local hashtags, follow those, uh, reach out to some of them and, you know, just kind of follow them and see if you align, maybe your views align with them and support them in any way that you can share, share their events, share their things that they have going on so that they kind of familiarize themselves with you. And then you can maybe then reach out to them and pitch them with a few ideas of how you could collaborate with them in the future. So, um, yeah, those are a I, few things. I get this here. So like you see, I'm saying like really like super forthcoming, like, like, like she, there's just a lot, there's a lot in there and it's very casual, right? Very, like, like you, you clearly know what you're talking about here. Uh, and it's really fun to be in space with you as you're talking. It actually reminds me of something I was thinking about. That's just playing out, which is, uh, my time back in college, um, and in New York city. And, uh, what I was thinking about in particular was that like when I had like existing networks in place, so like wherever I was like, like physically at, uh, and I saw people on a regular basis, so on and so forth. Uh, we were, we were in the same pond. There was a, there was a word of mouth that was able to go through at an, like a, like an accelerated rate. Um, whereas like when I think about things that happen online, it's like, if I'm not like the pools are different, you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like if I, I can go on someone's podcast and that podcast could be in a completely different pool than the next podcast that I'm on. You know, mm -hmm. um, we can go, there's, there's so many that, that, that like knock on word of mouth effect um, while it still happens, it ends up being like, feels like it ends up being more dispersed. Um, whereas I think about like, Hey, if I interview 10 people inside of an organization, well, all of them are going to share it. But then each time that they share it, the same, they, like they're sharing it with someone who's like, wow, if there's 10 people who are all talking about, let's say, I'll just use the podcast as an easy example, 10 people that I know that are all talking about the same thing here, like I should probably go and check that out. And I, I, I wonder if you get like, if, if from your experience, like some of the, like some of the different like value ads that you get from going down the local way that like. Yeah, that, that like that don't seem like as obvious 
in doing it um, if you decide to go down there? Like, like tell me what you got. Um, I think that people are much faster to refer you, even if they haven't worked with you, when they meet up with you locally, because they feel like they know you, even though they haven't necessarily worked with you. Um, they are more easily able to, oh, hey, my friend Rita, she's great at this, and let me refer you to her. Um, you know, so versus oftentimes online, you find where people aren't necessarily quick to refer unless they've actually worked with you. Um, and so I think that just building relationships in general are a lot easier when you're in person. And I know that for some people it's hard because they feel like they're introverted or maybe they're uncomfortable with in-person networking. But I would just say, if you're uncomfortable, then just, keep going to the events, you know, just go there and with the intention of making friends, don't go there with the intention of selling. And then the more you do it, the more comfortable that you will be. I'm not saying you're going to stand in front of everybody and like give a speech or anything. However, it will become easier and easier. And probably one of your um, extroverted people who are in the group will come and talk to you. <laughs> so it will become easier and easier as you do it. So I think that that's one thing. And then, you know, um, you know, there's so many things. And, and a lot of times the people that I meet in person, we're friending on Facebook, we're friending on LinkedIn, and we are still continuing the conversation after we um, are not in person anymore. Yeah, that so, was something I was going to ask you. Like, like, does local have to mean in person or or not? Like, let me just make sure I'm I'm seeing that. No, we're still supporting each other online. We're still yeah. we're friends on LinkedIn. We're friends on Facebook, even on um, Instagram. We're supporting one another with all of our our things. And you know, because we've met in person, we feel like we know each other a little bit more. I think. Yeah, like you know, it's like as I'm hearing you, there, there's. It feels to me that like at the core of all this here, it's just like good relationship building, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like good relationship building in, in, in places where like, but, but in places where like, and in a way that there's either more ease or like they, it, it, to me, it feels like the footprint is like, is smaller in a, in a meaningful way. Right. Like it's like large enough that like that you're getting new clients that new people are finding you so on and so forth, but it's small enough that like, it actually has like resonance with people right here and, um, and, and grow from there. So there, there's something in that, that I, that I actually really, I, I really enjoy. It. And I think part of the reason I'm asking myself as I'm talking about this here, I'm like, I'm like, Oh, like what, like, why am I like so interested in like helping out outliers feel like there's like something to gain from a, from a local perspective. Right. Um, yes, it's you, but I think that, I think like, I really do think you're, like, you've stumbled on something, which is like, Hey, most businesses don't need a thousand clients like at the same time in order for their business to be really successful. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there's something in, in, around here that feels like an outlier path to be like, to be like, I see everyone zigging and trying to go way, way, way wide. I have a business that, that doesn't require my physical presence, but in my local area, like I have everything I need covered out here. Right. And then I still on top of that have like everyone else out there that's, that's, that's still available. Can we speak to that? Like, they, like to me, they just feel like there's like some kind of outlier path in there. So when I say that, I mean like just like that unconventional way to like get, you know, get outsized returns. So let me, let me just check in with you on that. How real does that feel? Yeah, I think that oftentimes we, with social media, we've kind of been sold this idea of, you know, we can speak to more people by being on social media effectively. And it is possible, but there's, it's so much harder to build a audience that is engaged on social media now more than ever yeah. versus having met people in person and then getting them engaged with your content on social media because they've met you on in person they're more inclined more likely to like share 
and actually read and engage with your content than somebody who's just kind of seeing you in the feed. Therefore, it's actually going to improve your algorithm, right? Because you're going to get people liking your things and engaging with it. So it, it's overall, it's a better strategy to actually like and to get to know people locally, befriend them and to get them engaged in your strategies. And one thing that I do want to add is that often like do not go to local events, gather a bunch of business cards and do nothing with them. Do come back, befriend them on social media, put your emails into an email automation or something, invite them to get on a call afterwards. Even though you had a conversation with them in a networking event, oftentimes people are so distracted by what's going on and they may have like a regular conversation with you, but sitting down with someone even over, you can sit down and have an in-person meeting with them, but even a Zoom call with someone after the actual networking event will help kind of solidify the relationship because it's just the two of you um, versus just kind of depending or relying on that networking event to kind of carry your relationship. So that's just one little piece that I recommend is like following up after the fact and trying to get them into one little, whether in person or zoom call to um just kind of ask them you know what do you do how can i support you you know those type of things it's super interesting as you're talking about this here it's because it, it, it yeah it just feels like very it feels counter to what most people are saying right now which is uh, i like this um it, it's taking me right now to in my community there's a, a local real real estate company um and they what they've done, I think it's really great. It's like once a quarter or something like that, they'll actually just host an event for the entire community there. Um, they're like, it's not, it's, it, it, it is locally relevant, but there are a lot of other businesses that are there locally that aren't mm -hmm. having anywhere near of an impact as, as they are. They aren't like, uh, there was, there was a, like an event where it's like, bring your dogs in. You know, and they created a whole bunch of different like activities related to the dogs. It's good for the dogs and good for the kids. You know, uh, my kid went and uh, adopted a a blow up puppy, um, um, and don't don't tell him, but it, it it popped later on that day, so we had to go online and find a new one. Uh, oh. <laughs> we're like, uh, but like, but like he literally like he signed the card and all this stuff, and I I, I like the experience had nothing to do with buying a home specifically. But mm -hmm. these people have really decided, like, we're going to, like, actually connect the community, be a part of the community, be here and have a presence. And then for those people, like, like, they're on my mind. You know, I'm thinking about they're, they're in my home. I'm, it's not like a flyer that I got from them. They're, they actually have a presence. And I think about this here and like the par like a parallel where it's like. Yeah, your business might predominantly be online. You might be like, I still want to do Zoom calls. I still want to, like, meet with you and I like, have my online course. But now, like, I can tell you, like, there was, like, I don't know how many thousands of people came to that to that event over, like, the, you know, the, the, the four or five hour period of, of time there. Um, maybe it's hundreds of people. But it's, like, those are real people right now that have, a like, like a deep connection here. Yeah. And then you keep doing it and, like, it, keep, they, like, it keeps, they keep talking. And it's, like... And you're in a space where this is this is where I've talked about like the word of mouth. It's like people talk in like locally about about actually the same kinds of things, or or they're talking to people about things that they actually have like a, um, a, a like more common problems. I don't know how to describe it. like like I'm like oh well I'm having an issue in my business. I might go and talk to someone and say that to someone that's like look like nearby while I'm having coffee or drinking wine with them at like at the end of, at the end of the night, you know and and that benefit of being like oh hey by the way like this group of people or like you know have you heard about this person who does it he was just down the street the other day or we just partnered together on something locally i just think like those opportunities really exist um it's a cool move it's a cool move yeah, I had a, um, <laughs> yeah i had a client come to me for a strategy session she's in new york and she 
has a co-working space. And so she was trying to figure out how is she going to fill her co-working space and, you know, like what are some strategies that she could do? And so I, um, you know, was coming up with some tactics that I felt like would really help her. You know, one was like re-engaging with her current network, but another one was like coming up with a referral or like partnership um, program for her. Um, So, because I felt like she was, working with, you know, doing relationship building, but she really wasn't offering anything in order to like incentivize people to sign up for the co-working. And so that was one thing that um, I was offering, you know, suggesting that she, she adds to her business um, in order to get more local people to sign up for that. So, you know, there's so many different things. I like this year, like really, because it's like it's clear, like like you get this, you get this, you get this world, like like, and the opportunities are there, and and again, the the, the underlying business principles still apply, right? Um, mm-hmm. But we talk about both business and impact and leadership here on Outliers Edge, and I think that uh, what is really cool is that like. It, the approach you talk about with the local, like, to, like having a local presence as well, and really like making sure that your local strategy is strong, is that it helps the business. You're like, I'm just thinking, like, you have an opportunity to make an actual impact with the people in the community, uh, and like, you get to lead in many different ways because, like, you're out there being a player in in, in this space. So, um, there's lots of things in here that that really like align in here. Um, I like that you have like a ton of different op like options and, and such people like like you get it you get the game uh so let's let's go on this this route here i want to make sure that if anyone else is um is is listening and wants to go deeper wants to say like hey i want to like i want to like implement a local strategy i want to i want to continue going down uh your world rita like what's the best ways for them to do that well they could reach out to me um my website is ritasuzanne.com um and then i'm on all the socials at rita suzanne strategy so yeah find me and Let's chat. Let's chat. There we go. Um, Rita, I like to end each thing here with uh, uh, two I have two more questions for you. The first question I have for you is, uh, is a question about like your own insight. So like, what's something that you remembered? What's something that you're taking away from this conversation for yourself uh, based on this here? Because if we're, if we're having a conversation and the answer could be like nothing, like I'm not thinking anything new, but if anything else came to you that uh, I'd love to, to, to have you share it. Um, I mean, it just kind of, reinforces the you know my pivot a lot more because as we talked about it it is a new pivot for me so i love that um it kind of validates the decision that i've been making and we talked about me you know walking away from my podcast and and i i'm fine with that i'm I'm ready to i can feel i can feel you're super you're like you're like super ready you're like this is this is where i'm at i'm good yeah yeah Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I'm realizing like, like cause I'll ask like, like what was your insight here? And people are like, I feel about val- like, I feel validated in my thing. I'm like, like, yeah, you got something going on. I, I love doing this here, especially because we're doing things differently. And like what you're doing makes sense. Let's go with it. Let's keep writing. Let's let's. And how do we take this even further? Um, the last question I'm going to ask for you today is um, actually I'll ask one more beforehand, which is like uh, an outside. So an outside is like, what's a takeaway that you have for any li- out, out, uh, outliers who are listening right now? Uh, what's a takeaway you would have for them? What do you mean? Like, what's just like, if there's one last like piece of advice or anything that you want to like have them walk away with, what, what, what would that be? Um, definitely to look for some kind of networking events locally. Um, there are sometimes people I feel like, so my area is very much centered around entrepreneurship. So I live in Columbus, Ohio, which is, uh, growing as an entrepreneurial hub. So there are a lot of meetings for entrepreneurs. So there's a lot of space for me to network locally, but not everybody has that same opportunity. So I would say outside of Facebook groups and finding, you know, local networking, um, events there, you know, check out meetup for local things, check out like Eventbrite for anything local. And if you have to, like, there are some networking things that you could start with online, but they're just not as um, effective to me as they are um, the local, local ones. Awesome. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. The last question I'm going to ask you is I call the time capsule question. So Rita, uh, I want you to imagine leaving a message for yourself right now that you're going to listen to in 10 years. After 10, this is 10 years of like, right now you're like, I'm at the, the, the beginning parts of this, this pivot. This would be 10 years of you like helping people grow their businesses through their local, local and beyond, right? And growing oh, on yeah. top of that. Yeah. Uh, your kids would be 10 years older. You'll be 10 years older, all that. What's the message that you would want to leave to yourself right now in this moment? Uh my, I guess my message would just be, you know, like, just keep going. Like, that's just what I've, my message has always been to myself is just never stop. And I, I just won't until I'm, you know, where I want to be. And there we and when have I leave it. In 10 years, I'm going to be sitting on a beach. So it'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, well, thank you so much, Rita. I'm glad we got a chance to play together here. Um, thanks for bringing your experience. Thank you for thank you for boldly pivoting and like and like not uh, being complete. You know what I'm saying? Like 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 you're not tiptoeing. You're like I'm here to like add value. Let's go. Um, yeah. and, and I appreciate that about you. Right? Thank you so much for bringing your expertise and and your experiences to the to the table. It's been really fun. Thank you so much for having me.